last week, a man apparently went to the home of a federal judge uh, and murdered her son, critically wounded her husband, and then killed himself. This was obviously very big news, um, and it became even bigger news when people uh, immediately started speculating on the gunman's motivations. The judge in question, uh, Esther Salas, was uh, just a few days prior to the shooting assigned a case related to the dead billionaire pedophile and best friend of uh, Lawrence Krauss, Jeffrey Epstein. Specifically, the case was a lawsuit against Deutsche Bank, uh, which investors alleged had failed to comply with anti-money laundering measures and had instead taken on shady clients like Jeffrey Epstein, leading the investors to lose money. I think we can all agree that the real victims of that international child sex ring were the investors. I'm kidding. I honestly do hope that all of the institutions and people who propped up Epstein and his cronies see serious repercussions, even though they most likely won't. But yeah, fuck them. Sue them to the ends of the earth. Uh, So Salas was assigned this case, and just a few days later, a man dressed as a FedEx delivery man, apparently, uh, rang her doorbell and then shot her 20-year-old son and her husband. Salas herself was in the basement at the time and was unharmed. The conspiracy theorists completely lost their minds, uh, more than they already had. Over on Reddit, the Epstein subreddit debated whether Deutsche Bank was behind the hit or whether it was someone connected to Epstein's finances. Uh, No matter what, they were sure that this was a paid assassination, even though it was sloppy because hits are often purposely sloppy in order to make sure they send a message. Sure. Of course, uh, when the shooter was discovered to have killed himself, that was just further proof. Epstein didn't kill himself, and neither did this poor schmuck. Any idiot can see that he was clearly paid to murder a federal judge and her family, and then he was offed before he could tell anyone. Except that we almost immediately learned the identity of this would-be assassin. Roy Den Hollander, uh, an attorney who had previously tried a case before Judge Salas. And here's the kicker. Um, That name rang a bell for me because it turns out Den Hollander is infamous in my circle as a virulent anti-feminist men's rights activist. You've probably even heard of him. He's the guy who uh, back in 2007 started suing nightclubs for offering women, but not men, discounts on drinks uh, for ladies' nights. He mostly lost that bid, uh, just as he lost a 2010 suit in which he claimed a club committed a human rights violation by charging him $350 for a bottle of vodka when it let a woman in for free. I'm a woman, and I went to a club once uh, that had bottle service, And I was also asked to spend a ridiculous amount on shitty booze, and I just left. Uh, But I gotta say, uh, had uh, Den Hollander uh, been less of a misogynistic piece of shit, he might have had better luck by doing some sort of class action lawsuit that combined both men and women who wander into clubs dressed like, well, like this. This is just the way I dress. I'm not good in clubs. But he was a misogynistic piece of shit, so he lost that bid as well. Um, And he also lost another suit against Columbia University over them offering women's studies courses. Uh, He lost when he tried to prove in court that the Violence Against Women Act was discriminatory against men. And in 2016, he sued pretty much all of the mainstream media for the mean way that they reported on Donald Trump. And the case that he brought in front of Judge Salas was a challenge to the male-only draft. It's easy to see all of this and think, wow, this guy is a clown. Let's laugh at him. You know, I mean, I definitely did. But at the same time, Den Hollander wasn't just agitating for men's rights in the court system. He was very active in the MRA community online, including on YouTube, uh, where he had his own channel. His website is a gold mine of misogyny full of jokes about women um, by someone who appears to have never actually 
heard a joke before. Like, for instance, I have a computer to fight with. Who needs a wife? Ha <laughs> ha. Christopher Hitchens was right. Men are the funniest. He also made another entire website dedicated to humiliating his ex-wife, a young Russian woman who apparently divorced him as soon as she got her green card. The site includes revenge porn of her, as well as a memoir in which Den Hollander discusses how much he hates his mother. In fact, the book is dedicated to her. To mother, may she burn in hell. In that book, he also explicitly talks about how much he hates female judges in general and Judge Solace in particular, uh, saying that she is, quote, a lazy and incompetent Latina judge appointed by Obama. He talks about wanting to ask her out, but worrying that she'll hold him in contempt of court if he does. It's also worth mentioning that female journalists who have reported on his antics uh, have said that Den Hollander harassed them following their articles. In other words, Den Hollander was the very model of a men's rights activist. Man goes through bitter divorce, man joins men's rights movement, man harasses women, man seeks out woman and her family and tries to murder them. The men's rights movement is a machine that churns out dangerous terrorists, but because those terrorists tend to be white, Christian, usually male, uh, no one takes it seriously. They continue to gather on Reddit, YouTube, Facebook, and forums, and they continue to radicalize men like this. If they were Muslim, the FBI would have nipped this in the bud, but they're not. When one of them stalked and harassed me, for instance, and threatened to murder me, the police and the FBI ultimately did nothing about it. Uh, a cop told me that even though the man had previously been arrested for domestic violence, there was just no way to tell uh, which guy threatening to murder women online was actually going to follow through. So there weren't enough resources to investigate all of them. So it's better to just investigate none of them. They'll make a report, put it in a file, and when I answer the door one day and I get gunned down, they'll open up that file and have a pretty good idea of who it might have been. Comforting. So yeah, there's another life lost and another family torn apart thanks to men's rights activists. Uh, and the conspiracy theorists are just plugging their ears and saying that it's all a setup because in America, it's more believable and more comforting to believe that a dead pedophile put a hit out uh, on a judge because she's trying a case that's barely relating back to him uh, than it is to believe that a misogynist tried to murder the family of a woman who he repeatedly made misogynistic comments about. I'll end with the only amount of comfort I can get from any of this. Um, Roy Den Hollander is finally dead and gone. That's a good thing. And also now everyone will know that he was 69 years old when he died. Um, he constantly, in interview after interview, avoided talking about how old he was because he thought it would ruin his chance with women. Well, Roy Den Hollander was 69 and now he's dead and I hope his ex-wife has a good bottle of champagne to open up. <laughs>